Hi everybody, so I'm going to go through the process that I took to create this uh, painting within a tray. The first colour that I'm putting down is a Rust-Oleum white gloss spray paint which has been mixed with clear resin and every colour that I will be using to complete this painting within a tray, the base of the, the uh, paint or mica powder is clear resin. So that is Titanium White by Rust-Oleum uh, Spray Paint. The next colour that I'm going to put down, and I'm going to use various pinks, This here is a Perlex pigment and it's called Pink Gold. So it's a very shimmery pink with a definite color shift gold within it. And I've applied that alongside and overlapping the white spray paint in resin because whenever you put two products together that are have different properties such as mica powder, pigment, and spray paint, they will um, they will have some effect to each other, and some layering. They won't become one. They won't blend very easily, which is what I don't want. But I do want them to have um, some kind of relationship to each other. Now this next one that I'm put down, which is a very pale shimmery pink. This is also a Rust-Oleum spray paint. It's in their Metallics collection and it's called Champagne Pink. And Champagne Pink is a very interesting product. It doesn't really stand up, I don't believe, in its own right, particularly in resin. Um, it's very pale pink, almost a little bit silvery. But when I combine it in with other products, it definitely makes a contribution to the overall um, piece. And I'm coming behind that with some Mayron body powder, body paint powder, I should say, um, in been mixed in clear resin also, and this is metallic silver. And the Mayron body uh, powder is very light in its uh, qualities. It's uh, it's kind of similar to talcum powder, it's very dusty. So when combined in resin, it's inclined to stay closer to the surface because that lightness that comes with the product is retained in resin to a degree. But I'm putting it onto the piece quite early because I want to encourage it to, I'm going to be tilting this tray so I'm going to be rolling the products over each other and I'm hoping to lose some of the silver underneath colours and have it coming back up in places. So that's why I'm putting it on quite early. This next more vibrant pink is also a Perlex powder and it's called Flamingo Pink. And uh, so essentially it's a mica powder. It's a very rich pink. And as I said, I am going to be tilting this uh, tray painting to create some transitions. And what I'm going for is kind of like the inside of a beautiful shell. Um, in my bathroom, I have a large shell that uh, is on the side and the inside of it is very opalescent, um, it's very iridescent, lots of pink sort of shimmery gold colours with a little bit of grey silver and that's what I'm going for today. Um, I'm trying to create a kind of abalone kind of shell finish. And if you can hear little little noises, that's my little dog Harry has decided to walk into the studio. So 
So I'm going to have some negative space initially for the pour, so uh, for the tilt rather. So I will be putting some clear white, some more clear white into the um, spaces that are left. And I will run it through the painting because when I tilt it, I want, I don't want all the colour to move as one. I want it to kind of break apart a little bit and create some interesting sort of shimmering colours that are quite, quite prominent and yet quite subtle as well. And I'm also going to be putting into this painting some crushed glass. You, one of the substitutes you could use would be uh, some glitter, but I'm using crushed glass. And when I say crushed glass, I was given some very thin sheets of glass. The kind of thinness that I could almost break it in my hands if I wasn't careful. So I spray painted both sides of that glass in metallic silver or metallic gold and then I put them into like a Ziploc bag and crush them and some some of the shards became very fine the gold that I'm going to be putting in was quite fine glass shards and some of the shards are more um, chunky I guess and the silver ones are more chunky shards you'll see me put them in shortly and I found that they give a real sparkle, especially the silver. And um, I'm able to do that because this first layer of resin will cure and the glass will be one with that painting. But I always come behind and put a fine, clear layer of resin. And when I do that, the glass becomes underneath the resin, truly. So I'm adding some more of the Flamingo Pink Pearlix Powder. And the only colour that I haven't added yet that I will be adding is I will add some Mayron Body Powder in Lavender towards the end before I tilt. And this tray, I should add that last evening I applied a very fine layer of clear resin into the tray overnight, which sealed any gaps. Because if you don't seal it, you do risk air bubbles surfacing through the gaps. So what I'm doing right now is... Um, I'm kind of going around with my finger and I'm lightly blending the outer edge and making sure that I have coverage around the sides in a very kind of precise, neat, neat manner. And that will enable me to, when I tilt, not to be too concerned whether um, I need to actually cover the sides because essentially they would have already been covered. So I'm just lightly uh, running my finger through to create the transitions. I'm not blending the colours, but I am making them have some kind of relationship to each other. So I'm going to apply a light torch. I always do a light torch initially just to uh, warm the resin, which changes the viscosity, makes it more fluid. And by doing that, you can kind of gauge maybe some of the effects that will happen naturally. And I'm just adding a little bit more of the Mayron Metallic Silver. And with the mica powders, I always leave a little bit in each cup because I typically come behind towards the end and uh, 
reintroduce it where it needs to be um, introduced where maybe it's sunk under another color and I want to create an effect. So I always have a little bit on hand but very little. Half a teaspoon. And the crushed glass, you're going to see me um, start to apply it in a moment. I'm able to do that even though I'm going to tilt the piece because, well, because it's in a tray, there won't be any runoff. But also with the crushed glass, it's inclined to just stay on the surface, even though the resin underneath it is moving around. So I'm just introducing a little bit of the gold fine crushed glass through the piece. And it does, um, as I said, you can substitute this for some glitter. I know that uh, in Michael's you can buy quite chunky glitter now um, in varying shades. And in this tray, this layer, I use 16 fluid ounces of clear resin. And the resin that I'm using is Promarine. Now what I'm putting on now is the silver glass, which is um, chunkier shards. And you, you are seeing the hint of sparkle and that's because it's a, a bigger shard of glass and it yields um, more sparkle. So I'll apply a little bit more heat before I, tr I tilt it because I don't want to uh, have it not in a liquid state. And this is where I, I started to look at the, the colors, especially around the edges um, and overall. And I decided that I would add the Mayron body powder in lavender as a metallic lavender. And it's a really kind of a mid-purple color, um, very pretty. 
So I'm going to run that round before I tilt it. And you saw the angle just change a little bit. Um, my phone, iPhone, kind of moved in its uh, holder. So that's why the angle changed. But it didn't fall in the resin, which has happened before, so I'm thankful for that. So this is the Mayron Lavender body powder. And I'm just putting um, kind of strategically where I want it using a popsicle stick. So I'm just defining some of the shapes with the Mayron Lavender body powder, which is a very light textured mica powder essentially. And if you look at the silver, and you look kind of, if this was a clock face and my hand was right in the middle there, just look towards um, three o'clock towards the right and you'll see some sparkly silver there. That's the Mayron body powder. Some of it is coming to the surface very sparkly, whereas if you look at kind of carry on down and you look at more four o'clock or nine o'clock, you'll see that the silver has kind of become one with the white spray paint um, and the pink champagne spray paint and there's less is there as a silver but more discreet and you'll be able to see this a bit better when I tilt because I will lift up the tray and it will be <coughs> excuse me it be closer to the camera Okay, quick torch, and then I will tilt the painting and hopefully create some transitions similar to the inside of a shell. So 
So as you can see with resin, it doesn't move like a fluid acrylic painting. Um, the resin is way thicker than that. Um, so there, there is some, with experience comes a little bit of skill, I guess, as far as how you can manipulate and get some great designs. But already you can see that they've come, they've expanded out and run over each other, the different products, and they're creating some interesting transitions already. And that gold is the pink gold by Perlex powder. You can see a lot of the shimmery glass there. And I'm still tilting at this stage. So there you can see some of the close-up colors and the glass sparkling and the gold, the pink gold Perlex powder there. I think it came out very pretty. I'm just putting some extra light on there so that you could see some of the color shift and maybe some of the sparkle. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And here's some close-ups. So you can see the crushed glass here and the pink gold Perlex powder. There's the Mayron silver with the flamingo pink. It is quite shimmery. It's actually, it's very difficult to photograph just how beautiful it came out. It's very pretty. And that's, that gray there is quite silver. Uh, the light's not picking it up truly. It's actually very shimmery silver.